This video is my first in a series on pier fishing. It's a record of an autumn session on Clapton Pier which I'd never fished before, so regard it as an exploratory session rather than an expert's guide to the venue. I've arrived at the end of a pier with fellow angler Alex and our first task is to use the convenient toilets and to put on a wet weather gear before venturing through the gate onto the extension to the pier which is where you fish from. The weather's not looking too good and Alex is sporting his flotation jacket but luckily for us there are five shelters on the pier to choose from. Jeremy, who's a local, is fishing from the last one. I've chosen to go to the fourth and Alex is going to the third. The shelters are a great idea but not all the glass panels and roofs are intact but they do offer some welcome cover when you need it. Not having any specialist pier gear, I'm using my standard continental beach setup. Since there aren't any solid railings here, a tripod is useful. First cast out with a free hook clip down rig and lugworm, I'm into fish straight away. Jeremy had been catching whiting and dogfish on almost every cast, and I'm not surprised to find that my first fish are whiting. That's a double shot, and I'm already thinking I've got to try to do something different to catch something other than whiting. So that would be my first and last cast with this rig. My other rod has a two hook loop rig with much bigger hooks, double lug worm and big chunks of squid. I'm hoping that if there are any coddling about this might attract them and when it starts pulling hard on the ebb I might go over to much larger baits, whole squid and squid and bluey on pulley panels or dropper rigs. Unless you really want the extra distance there's no real advantage to clipping down on piers but I'm doing it just out of habit. One up one down flappers are just as good and cheaper to make. I've got plenty but find that I don't use them that often so I've left them at home. The same goes for my drop net which hasn't seen any use but fortunately Alex has brought his. I'm going to have to get a lot more organised next time I come here or any other pier for that matter. So you can tell that I haven't fished from a pier for a while and that's one of the main reasons I've come here with Alex. For me today's all about re-familiarising myself with fishing from man-made structures hopefully catching plenty of fish to encourage me to come back and figure out what gear I'm going to need to get for next time to be more successful. Having clipped down, I've now decided I'm going to fish two rods, one at distance and one for chucking down the edge. I'm setting myself a target to catch anything other than whiting or dogfish. Clapton Pier is well known for being pretty good for rays and bass also show from here. However, since it's the first time I've fished here, I've set my sights a bit lower and just looking for anything at all other than those two fish. As you might imagine, I'd be happy to catch flatfish. I've replaced the free hook rig with one that has smaller hooks. This has fine wire, Nordic bend, number three and four hooks and be used with lugworm and small bits of rag. Soles and dabs are the intended species, but it remains to be seen whether I catch any or not. If I'm still getting whiting on it, then I may switch to a boom rig. Before I drop this rig down the side, I'll run through the locational details. Clapton is the main settlement of the Tendring Peninsula and I've covered a lot of ashore venues in my Tendring playlist. Here I've identified some of these from Frinton to the start of Jaywick. The other pier in this area is at Walton on the Nays. I fished there quite a bit in the past but at the time of making this video it's currently going under renovation. Clapton Pier is right in the centre of the town and it divides Marine Parade West from Marine Parade East. There's roadside parking but if you're staying for more than a few hours then Colne Road car park's your best bet. Fishing from Clacton Pier is only from the extension at the end. The toilets are to the side and just before the Jolly Roger restaurant and I've identified where I fished for this session. I'm dropping this rig short to see if there's anything there but I've still got the option to be able to clip it down and chuck it a long way if needed. The tide's still on its way up and it's not running much so it's quite easy to fish two rods. Other anglers have now arrived and gone to the end where Jeremy was fishing. Being a true gent, he's given me his leftover bait. After a quick chat with him, he's confirmed that a few souls are still being caught from here, so it's definitely worth a go with that boom rig down the side. I'm also grateful for him for putting me onto that mark at Albany Gardens, 
where I got those soles over a year ago in the summer. Alex has fished here quite a lot in the past and has had some decent fish, but at the moment it's quite quiet and just like myself, he's only had whiting. Jeremy had to pack up early and he said he couldn't get through the whiting and dogfish and it also didn't take very long for those who replaced him at that spot to do likewise, catching those two species. Amongst his spare bait, Jeremy gave me some local sticky black lug and that's always a good bet to try and catch dabs and it didn't take long for me to catch on that on a boom rig. Since I cast that boom rig down the side, I got a telltale bite which led me to believe it was a dab. And sure enough, there's a small dab on the bottom hook, but a whiting on the middle one. Although it's only one of those tiny see-through dabs, I'm still quite happy to have caught it. The rig I've cast out a distance hoping to catch codling hasn't really worked, although it's caught me a few more whiting, they're not what I'm after so I'm changing that rig over to one with bluey on the bottom hook and whole squid on the top. If there is still a odd ray about, I'm hoping it might find one of these two baits to its liking. Having said that, at this time of year you're probably just likely to catch them on worm baits. This is a two snud clip down rig with penalled hooks. I'm letting the bottom snud drop down and float in front of the lead. Whilst waiting for the next bite, I'm baiting up a spare rig with a combination of baits. I'll keep trying different things to try and catch something other than whiting. A slightly better bite on a distance rig gets me excited. Unfortunately, the fish that took a liking to the bluey was only yet another whiting. It's slightly bigger, but Alex wasn't impressed. The bait seems hardly touched, it doesn't need to be replaced.
Well, it looks like the boom rig's definitely working. In comes the next dab. But it's only a sliver of fish. Well, in my opinion, that's better than catching whiting. Time to try a section of ragworm on the bottom hook. Ragworm gets a slightly better dab. Then another whiting to bluey. Twitching the bait on a boom rig works, I get response straight away. That's more like it. The ragworm gets me a soul. Alex comes over for a look and now desperately wants to catch a flatfish. I explain the need for small hooks and using small sections of worm. He goes back and modifies one of his flapper rigs, removes the hook on the bottom snood and super glues on what looks like a size 10 spade end hook, puts on a bit of ragworm and drops that down the edge. To his surprise that worked and it wasn't very long until he was into his soul as well. Then he had to go one better and caught a second.
Unfortunately, my distance rig gets snagged and I'm not able to free it. I end up pulling for a break. And worse was to come. Those dark clouds in distance were coming our way. Thank goodness for the shelter. It's a thunderstorm and the wind's picked up but rain starts easing off. Nothing but writing keep coming in on my long snood rig. The tide's ebbing now and all I seem to be catching is whiting, so a change of plan is needed and I move to fish the other side of a pier. Alex said that some good bass could be caught there. I decided to drop the boom rig down the edge again, but use the other rig to cast towards the corner of the pier. Tide's ripping through on the side we were fishing before, but it's a lot calmer here. We both agree that it's a chance of catching something other than whiting. I'm chucking large worm baits just off that corner. Didn't take long to get a decent bite, but it looks like I've missed that.
I'll get my first bite on the boom rig. So, Alex was right, there are bass here, but this isn't the size I was expecting to catch. However, it does add to the species count. Next, a double shot, this time on a big worm rig. I've got a whiting on a bottom snud and a dab on the top, so I've now caught a dab where I was expecting bass and a bass where I was expecting dabs. This dab is quite a decent size. One problem with chains here is that occasionally your snoods get wrapped around them. And that species number five is not a whiting, but a pouting.
plenty of action now, but from nothing spectacular. then get a couple of good knocks which I can't hit. I hold the rod and feel the fish take again. This time I struck into it. It feels like a better fish. Unfortunately, it turns out to be an eel, but at least it's something different. Flows are whiting, but nothing decent coming out. It's time to go back fishing the other side. A quick look at the gear and some of the bait I've been using. Although I've been catching, these rods seem too long for fishing here. I'm going to need to invest in some shorter pier rods. Any suggestions would be most welcome. The ragworms are very good quality, but they're a bit too big for my liking. The guys fishing at the end gave me their frozen black lug. I've been using some of Jeremy's local stuff and I've also been using black lug from Dungeness. Bluey and squid make up the rest of my bait list. Another good thing about the shelters is that they have a fish size limits posted on them. You can measure your catch so there's no excuses for taking undersized fish. Back to the action. My hopes were high for catching a codling. I've got something on which feels a bit bigger. I was hoping it was going to be a codling. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It is another species, though. It's species number seven, but it's another one I was trying to avoid. They were catching quite a few from the end, so I suppose it was inevitable that I was going to get one. I don't mind catching dogfish now and again, but just like whiting, at times, they can just be a nuisance. Better size pouting this time.
Our session is coming towards the end, and I finish off with a wide sing and a velvet crab. Alex, on the other hand, finishes off with something which is a bit more of a novelty. New species, Alex. Alex of a new species. Right. Is that your biggest place? <laughs> I'm very jealous that you caught two souls in a place, but this one's got to be the smallest I've ever seen. Despite the weather, this has been a very enjoyable session, and I'll be back, and hopefully the coddling will appear, and maybe a ray or two.